Hello, hello. Welcome to Confidence Through Cabaret, the podcast or podcast. My name is Heather Jean. I'm your host today, and I'm so excited for this episode. This is this is the essence of Confidence Through Cabaret, this conversation. We are talking all about learning to love yourself and feel good in your body. And if you've been around Confidence Through Cabaret for a while now, you will know that we talk about confidence in personal life, work life, and stage life. And that means that we need to be unapologetic and feel good in our body and know what our passions are about and be able to express them by raising our voice and sharing our message, which are all things that you would do if you were on a comf- on a cabaret stage and, and, and being confident in that. And that's what we are going to be talking about today. If you are listening to this on podcast, you are welcome to go over to the YouTube channel, Confidence Through Cabaret, check out the vodcast playlist and you'll be able to see it on video. And if you're here with us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And then you can also listen to the audio version anywhere you get your podcast, search Confidence Through Cabaret, and you'll be able to find this wonderful episode. So my guest today is a mental wellness coach with a background in mental health counseling. Uh, So my guest is passionate passionate about helping women learn to love themselves and their body. And we are all for that. Um, And the idea is that when we love ourselves and our body, then we can live a happy, confident and free life. And I'm so excited to be having this conversation with Ashley Carpentier. Hello. Hey, welcome to Confidence Through Cabaret. Thank you so much for having me. It is such a pleasure. It it, it is I, I you know I love the podcast. It it wasn't something that we it ever really intended or expected to do, and and then it just there was so many conversations to have about confidence and so much so many aspects to it and so mm-hmm. much to it. And you know when you and I started uh, our conversation in messages. Uh, it, it was just so fully aligned to be yes. talking about feeling good in our body. Yes. Ah, how did you get into this? How did you get started? Well, um, it's kind of crazy. It all started with a psychology class in high school. Oh. I got very interested in eating disorders. So I went through grad school. And as I was going through grad school, I actually worked at an eating disorder clinic. And so I was working like hands on with these girls who were struggling with their body and, you know, working with them um, in the therapeutic world, um, helping them learn to love their body. And so that's kind of where um, this passion came from is just, you know, as I worked with those girls, I found this passion to help women love their bodies. So, yeah. And it's wonderful, isn't it? Because a lot of our lives, we we don't plan things; they just mm-hmm. happen, and it and it takes us to finding our passion. Yeah. So, what what do you think the biggest thing is around women not loving their bodies and and feeling good? The thoughts they have about their body, obviously, which can come from a lot of different places, like experiences, comments people have made. And those things like stick in our brain and they create this feeling of almost hatred sometimes for our body. And so I think changing those thoughts and working through those thoughts is the biggest thing for a lot of women. Yeah. And I think sometimes we don't even realize the depth of those thoughts and Mm -hmm. the damage, if you like, of those experiences. and we we very often end up shrinking you know and yeah. we we're almost apologetic for, mm-hmm. for who we are and how we appear yeah how do you how do you go about uh helping somebody to really feel good in their body like what what's the what's the step one of that i think step one for me starts with physical so i I go over physical, mental, and emotional healing. Um, But physical, you know, when you are taking care of your body, you feel good in your body. And so that's where I have clients start is 
the physical, like moving your body, fueling your body, things like that. And then we can move on to the the other pieces. Yeah. And then you can get into the kind of that, you know, wh- where is that coming from? Any, any mm-hmm. kind of, yeah, limitations or doubts or, or whatever it is that, that people are having. So how do you, so, so in your experience, what's the best way to just start to move in our body? Well, I think it's different for every person. So that's, that's kind of hard. Um, yeah. It could be, you know, walking, going on a walk. That's really therapeutic for a lot of people. Um, you know, it could be lifting weights or, you know, playing with your dog, you know, just being able to move your body is so good for your body and will, you know, make your body feel good. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's so tied to the to the mental and emotional, as you've said. So you mm-hmm. you you really there must there are some days for all of us where we don't even we, we don't even want to get up. Do you know we don't we don't want to face the world. And mm-hmm. then and then you know getting through that mental thought can be just getting started. As you say, mm-hmm. going for a walk or something. And I think um, you know so often we are in our body about serving others, about how we appear, mm-hmm. what other thinking or saying or so so how do you get people to to let that stuff go and just feel into their body yeah that's a a really hard thing to let go of Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people feel like they're neglecting others or that they feel guilty for thinking of themselves and so really just letting go of some of those feelings pushing those to the side and taking care of you I think that is ultimately how you work through that yeah yeah it's it's interesting because self-care has become this Mm -hmm. you know huge topic and buzzwords Mm and um and people think oh that's lighting candles and putting on music and Mm -hmm. having a bath and it can be but Mm -hmm. the guilt behind it isn't to be underestimated yeah it's, yeah, uh, for sure. It's a tough thing to get over that. Things like setting boundaries can be self care. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes absolutely. you need that. Absolutely, and and I think you know p- part of that is carving out time for yourself, no matter how busy you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, yeah. It, it it's a. Uh, I was good at the walking. I was good. I I ran presentations and conferences and I thought I felt great in my body until I got into my body and started mm. doing things like body tracing and being expansive. And then I realized, oh, I'm not good at this at all. <laughs> yeah. And that's where, that's where cabaret came from. But I think, you know, um, for, for, for a lot of us, you know, being on a cabaret stage was a million miles away from, you know, where, where we are t- today. And, and actually it doesn't have to be something that you want to do, but do, do you find that when you work with people that they do find what it is that they enjoy that their body can do? Usually. Um, I usually encourage clients to really not listen to what other people are doing. Yes. Like listening to recommendations is helpful, But if those recommendations don't work for you, you're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to stick with it. You know, you're not going to feel good if you don't enjoy it. So I always really encourage clients to find what works for them. Otherwise, it's not going to (laughs) work. Yeah. And then that becomes another thing that that I quit or I failed at or I couldn't do or, you know, and then that feeds that cycle again. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so how do you get people to find what it is that they enjoy doing? Like, because it sounds like a really easy thing to do uh, mm-hmm. in my head, because I found mm-hmm. the things I enjoy doing. Right. But, but that took a long time. And I feel like there was probably a better route than, than, you know, kind of waiting for inspiration, you know, yeah. how do you, how do do, how do people in your experience find what it is that they love doing? 
Well, part of it is kind of trial and error, you know, you have to try things out to see if you like them or don't like them. Um, but also take a step back and think about what, what do you think will bring you joy? Like, will does being out in nature bring you joy? If so, take a walk. Um, you know, do you enjoy lifting weights or, you know, feeling strong? Um, you know, you kind of have to think about what brings you joy and what is going to make you feel really good. And I think that's where you have to start. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so I found my joy. Let's say it's in nature and I'm mm -hmm. I'm enjoying walking and I'm enjoying that feeling of being outdoors and 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 you know, there's a certain fitness aspect to it as well. Um then you talk about the mental and emotional. So how do you feed that in next? I think um well, so with the mental, um you know, kind of working through what, like becoming aware that's that's the first thing is becoming aware of the thoughts you're having a lot of women aren't even aware of you know the thoughts they're having about their body and so really starting with that awareness piece um writing down your thoughts journaling that kind of thing to really increase that awareness of what you're thinking about your body yeah and do you go do for you, does it matter where those thoughts came from? Like where, where we got those beliefs or that programming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like I said, experiences, things like that, that can play a big part in um, especially how people feel about their body. And so um, looking back can be helpful to move forward. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it can. It, it, it can. And I think... Um, it can it can inform that whole piece about so this is th this programming was given to me by somebody else and it is not true yeah versus i have these mm -hmm. thoughts and they seem true it's like when you can isolate that of where its origins are then then you can realize mm -hmm. no that was something my my mother always used to talk about you know that i had really big thighs like you know, and she would, she would talk about it, you know, uh, I had figure skater thighs, she would say, you know, cause they always had, they, they don't so much anymore, but they used to have, you know, very, very strong, strong legs. And, and of course that muscle development, um, made them strong. And I, I, for a long time, I still struggle with it. You know, that mm -hmm. whole kind of, like, I don't, I, if I, if I could change one part of my body, it would be that, um, I want very long, thin legs, you know, very model-esque because that was the opposite of that programming. But I've, by finding that origin, been able to um, go, go back and do that work about what does that do for me? That lets me, you know, go for walks or that lets me mm -hmm. do aerial because they are strong. Do you know what I mean? So that lets yeah. me do the things I enjoy doing, which is this the same belief, but a different, a different take mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. And like you said, a lot of people don't recognize that these thoughts maybe aren't true or that where these even came from. So that's why looking back on that is really important. And I think another thing is um, comments people make about themselves can also affect other people. Like you were saying, your mom made this comment about you, but I've heard a lot of mom, a lot of women saying their moms made comments about their bodies and then that kind of transfers over to the daughter right so like maybe they weren't necessarily making the comment about the girl but they kind of take that into account for themselves yeah yeah and i think if you grow up with you know whatever you grow up modeling wise you know it really is a monkey see monkey do thing if mm -hmm. you grew up with a mother that was always dieting and was always you know over exercising and things then yeah. you would feel like that was the way to go and that would be what would be rewarded or celebrated right um because we do we do copy the people around us mm -hmm. um, how much do you think when we're growing up our friendship circle comes into play because certainly our parents are mm -hmm. carer 
and, and even teachers, but, but our friends as well, like, oh yeah, that can become a norm, right? Within the, yeah. within the social circle. Yeah. Like you said, with dieting or, um, you know, comments other friends make about their bodies, they can really affect you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have those same kind of memories about, about the size or shape or, or interest about, about body that my friends were doing, but I was certainly influenced by other behaviors that they did mm -hmm. that I felt like I should be doing. And it, it becomes that peer pressure. And I've gone on to work with, with teenagers a lot around that, that peer, that peer pressure and, mm -hmm. and, and creating positive messages and, and lessening the, the risk taking behaviors. Um, but that, that, I mean, if you, if we think about our own behaviors very often, our, our friendships, you know, we yeah. look to the parents, right? We look to yeah. like adults in our life, but actually our, mm -hmm. our friends and their, their conditioning came from their parents as well. Uh -huh. So, so it, you know, if you and I grow up together, then what your parents said to you will impact me as well. Yeah. And I think another important part of this is social media. Like now social media is so big that even like influencers and people that you follow on social media can influence how you feel about your body. For sure. For sure. I, I, I grew up with, you know, magazines and TV. So that mm -hmm. was, that was where, where mine uh, came from. But I mean, social media is just a whole minefield. How, how can we use social media to, to create a positive uh, mindset and body mm -hmm. image? Yeah, this is something I like to always teach is um, how to positively use social media, because it can be a really good thing. Um, first of all, following positive accounts and unfollowing accounts that make you feel less than in your body um, is a huge thing. And really um, taking breaks from social media can be really healthy. You know, having those boundaries with social media can help in really feeling good in ourselves. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I wonder, I'm just having this thought out loud now. I'm just thinking, so if you grew up with mainly kind of images, you know, so, uh, Facebook and, and um, uh, Instagram primarily, mm -hmm. then a lot of that was images and of course mm -hmm. now we're into videos and we've got TikTok and we've got YouTube and we've got you know a, a lot more video content it's harder to kind of filter that and make that mm -hmm. flawless image the way it would be if you did 300 selfies to find the perfect yeah. one <laughs> you know? so do you think that makes it do you think that makes it more natural in a way or I do I think it makes it more real um you're seeing not flaws, but like people make mistakes and people aren't perfect, you know, um, and seeing that in real time for real um, and not the hundredth selfie that was taken and filtered um, can help people feel more, um, you know, normal, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's almost like it's it's a natural thing that we all make yeah. mistakes you know yeah. I, I i had a real difficulty once i got kind of past the the being on stage that because that for me only lasts a, a certain amount of minutes and then it's over right whereas the video is there forever yeah you know, it's coming back and i think you know i i had to get my head around social media versus real life stage and in, in in business sense as well as in performing and i think when when we get to the social media bit, just accepting that technology is going to go wrong and you're going to have, you know, bad hair days or say the wrong thing or, you know, whatever it is, forget what you're yeah. going to say. Uh, I, I think, I think that that whole kind of perfectly imperfect is mm -hmm. so important. But how, do you think that we're striving to be more perfect? Is that ultimately what you experience in? Oh, yeah. With friends? yeah, that's definitely, um, one of the pillars I teach is perfectionism and how we are not meant to be. Per no one is perfect, right? So, um, yeah, that's definitely something I run into, especially with body image. You know, a lot of women feel like they have to have the perfect body and the ideal body 
um, which your ideal body is your most comfortable body and most confident body. But a lot of people learn from diet culture that it looks a certain way. And so um, they strive for that perfect image and it's just not a real thing. <laughs> it's not a real thing. And then, and then that's without even taking into account things like, uh, you know, aging process mm -hmm. and what society says about that or what society says about women versus men or, you know, all of those, all of those mm -hmm. kind of things. Yeah. So what is the, I, the ideal way to get through perfectionism in your experience? It's a hard one to break through. Um, I think, um, you know, allowing, trying to think of how to say this, allowing yourself to make mistakes and accepting that, not mistakes, sorry. <laughs> um, you know, allowing yourself to be imperfect. No one is perfect and um, not bringing yourself down and punishing yourself for not having the highest standard. And maybe that means lowering your standards. Maybe your standards are too high. And so kind of taking a look at like where your standards are, do you need to lower them for yourself to better accept yourself, you know? Um, and I think some of those standards come from society. Um, some of them come from what we think we need to do or what we think society says. And so really taking a look at those. It's a really good point. And I think it, it fits beautifully within the boundaries. It's, it's, it's one thing to have boundaries around carving out time to look after yourself or do the things you enjoy, but then to what standard, um, because, you know, if, if I use cabaret as an example, you know, I, you're you're in a lineup right of of performers through the night and if you're constantly saying i i don't measure up to their standards mm -hmm. what i think are their standards not even their standards yeah and i've been backstage a lot of times so i've heard performers who are headliners who are top of their country who are burlesque hall of famers who are you know just incredibly accomplished cabaret performers and then they'll they'll come backstage and go, oh, is that okay? I, mm, I don't know. You know, it, that's interesting mm -hmm. because because they their standards of themselves are way too high. You know, the, yeah. the rest of us love it. You know. Yeah, but others want to be like them. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I think there's a there's a there's a a possibility that if we are setting our standards too high then we're always aspiring to be more like other other people who we think are you know better than us mm -hmm. and it really limits our joy in that moment because we're never feeling good enough yeah yeah i think that's a big thing is you know you lose your joy when you are comparing yourself or trying to be someone else yeah yeah and i think social media coming back to that discussion mm -hmm has a lot to answer for in terms oh, yeah. of us comparing ourselves, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so how, how, how do you help your clients be able to, to, to set realistic standards? Like what, mm -hmm. what's the way to do that? Cause we could have a conversation where you explore or help me explore my standards, but then how do you help me bring those to a more realistic level? Yeah, I think, you know, setting things like SMART goals, which I know are very widely used, but really making, you know, realistic goals in a time frame and, you know, um, looking at your goals and the steps under the goals and are those um, achievable, you know? for you and sometimes they're way, way out there. Um, so sometimes bringing them in and taking it down a couple steps or taking a couple steps back is how we set, you know, the realistic 
goals. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good point because we always want to be progressing forward and mm -hmm. being able to take that step back is really important. Yeah. So and sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we don't realize that we're way ahead of ourselves. So I think, you know, having someone to bounce those standards and goals off of is important. For sure. For sure. And that's why there's a whole coaching industry, right? That's mm -hmm. why. That's why, you know, we need someone to help us with our accountability or our clarity or, or whatever that is. Yeah. So, Ashley, if you were performing in cabaret, which uh, for those who are new to this uh, podcast or vodcast, uh, cabaret for me is about being in a small venue. And that that doesn't mean I mean, you know, Dita Von Teese is, is a burlesque performer, which is a form of cabaret, uh, you know, um, let's say Barbara Streisand or Bette Midler or, you know, they, they're 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 singing, they're performing the way a cabaret performer could. But but in huge audiences and stadiums and, and theaters. But, you know, in cabaret, we tend to be in a small venue. And that means that we are more intimate with our audience. We're more connected. We can see them all for a start. Um, and for a lot of people, that's more intimidating than being in this huge anonymous environment. Um, but, you know, we could be singing, we could be dancing, we could be uh, doing burlesque, we could be doing contortion, we could be doing drag king or drag queen, we could be doing any, it could be doing aerial, oh, any number of things on, on a stage in our spotlight performing. What would you do if you were going to be on a cabaret stage? Uh, you mean like, what would I perform or? Yeah, what, what kind oh. of performance would you want to do? I don't know. Um, something calm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very like, I don't know, chill. I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah. I'm very much an introvert. I'm very, um, you know, laid back and, um, but I'm also a hard worker. So I think, you know, something slow, um, I don't know. That's a hard question. Yeah. So are you thinking like you might do something that's more like, oh, I, I mean, I can think of so many different things you could do with that. You know, it, you, it, it could be something around poetry. It could be something around, you know, movement. A lot of times we think of dance mm -hmm. as really quite ferocious and, and mm -hmm. energetic, but actually it can be very slow and, mm -hmm. and sultry or sensual or, or, or or expressive mm -hmm. um it could be it could be singing i mean you know sort of singing more ballads or you know that kind of thing is there is there a kind of performance that you would enjoy or would love to be able to do even you know i am not a dancer but i've always loved the like expressive slow fluid moving dances i i can't think of the word right now but I love that. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Almost kind of a, a combination with contemporary dance and just that, that, that mm -hmm. flow. Yeah. 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 So, um, if you were taking a prop with you on the stage, what would that prop be? Maybe like, um, a piece of cloth or like a ribbon or something like that to move with. I love that. That's the first uh, thing, the first prop that I uh, experienced working with. And it was just in a class and we come back to it quite often, but just that, uh, like a, a piece of fabric just to mm -hmm. flow with. Yeah. And what what's interesting in my journey with that is that when I started out, I was grasping it like it was a, <laughs> like a winter scarf. <laughs> in the UK we have football scarves so just a long long narrow scarf and I was like you know kind of moving it around and my uh my teacher said you need to let go and just let it <laughs> let it flow yeah and I didn't want to because that was taking up too much space oh. right because in order to hold your fabric out you've got to you've got to you know stretch your arms out and be expansive mm -hmm. right? I wanted to kind of be much more tight with it. Um, 
and I, I love that. I still go back to that. I have several pieces of fabric that I just will, will flow with and float with. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful feeling. Yeah. So what would your intention be of having that, let's say that cloth or that fabric with you? Is it is it so that you can kind of move with it or is it more that you could be behind it or? I think moving with it, you know, just having that flow with it yeah yeah it's interesting because you could use like you could use that piece of fabric and hi literally hide behind it you could wrap yourself around it uh, 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 mm -hmm. wrap it around you i should say and be like we you know really like i'm secure i'm in a blanket nobody can really see me <laughs> um and so and so but what I love is the opportunity that you just expressed around being able to move with mm -hmm. it. And yeah. just, cause cloth is very free, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to go and you're going to do some, some slow movement on a stage in your spotlight unapologetically with your fabric or your cloth. What would your stage name be Ashley? Hmm. I don't know. It's interesting, isn't it? Because there's an inner knowing in us. And this is why I always ask uh, my guests is what is that inner uh, persona? You know, what is it that we are when we're expressing ourselves for others? What is it that we're expressing? And it's interesting because for me, my, my, my stage name is Helen and various forms of Helen is what I use. Um, currently it's also Helen because I like to have, I can do this, also this, also this, I, you know, and I, I have a, a, a lot of temperament with it, but I, I, I've incorporated Helen in, in different ways, in different parts of my, um, movement. And uh, I feel like she is a different part of my expression than mm -hmm. being Heather. Like Heather's a, mm, <laughs> other you know um but i feel like uh for some people there's like a queen or a, a diva or a something that comes do you know what i mean like that yeah. comes out that we suppress and that's why i like to play with that kind of so who is that other voice in us that is expansive, that is joyous, that has boundaries and standards and knows who they are and has our goals that are, you know, properly, realistically set and all of the things that we've been talking about that, that totally doesn't worry about perfection and mm. what the world says on social media and all of those things. And for some of us, it's not a different name. It's just a different tone of voice mm -hmm. in us. Like you might be Ashley. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh. yeah, yeah. I think it's definitely you know that confidence that comes out and mm -hmm. um, not having that fear of what other people are gonna think and just being me. Yeah, and it's that. It's that. It's mm -hmm. that essence that when you're going onto a real a real stage you need to put that out there. And when you're going on to a social media stage or a podcast or whatever, you need to put out there, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm Ashley, I'm Heather. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, mm, yeah, it's not yes. a politic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's being able to channel that. And I wonder, mm -hmm. you know, without going onto a stage with your, your fabric and you're ready to dance and, and be introduced in that way, what is it that enables you, Ashley, to be able to show up and go, I'm here, this is what I have to say, and mm -hmm. I'm not worrying about what it, the world is going to think? What, it, what, it, what is it that lights you to be able to do that? There's a lot of different things that light me up, um, but something, a technique actually I've learned recently um, is just picturing this light inside of me and letting that light come out and being, you know, my true self and finding joy in where I'm at um, has really been a good tool to expressing myself and being myself and being happy in myself and where I'm at. 
That's beautiful. So is that, does that require sitting in quiet to be able to picture that or how, how do you connect? With Usually, um, yes, you know, sitting in quiet and just, you know, maybe closing your, your eyes for a few seconds and just picturing this light coming out of you. Um, and, you know, your goal is to be that light, right? So, um, yeah, just kind of picturing that and it just creates this feeling of like warmth and joy, so. That's beautiful. That's really nice. That's really, that's something that I think we could all connect to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think silence and, and being still and, and really connecting to that, that energy is, is something that a lot of us don't make enough time for. Yeah. Yeah. For a while, I just, I was like, I don't need that. Like, it's not for me. But I've recently come to realize that I do need it. So. That's it's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. So Ashley, I have, I have um, actually two more questions. Uh, one of them is, what is your favorite piece of advice that you've ever received? Oh, um, that's a hard one. Um, I think, I don't know that it was necessarily said, but growing up, my parents always taught us to be yourself and don't let other people in, infiltrate. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, don't let other people change who you are. And um, so that's kind of, you know, be you, be yourself. That's beautiful. Which is, it's simple, um, but it can also be really hard. So. Very hard sometimes. Very <laughs> hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, um, I think that's, a really good place to start. And I think mm -hmm. for a lot of people finding what that means to be you is, is a journey and it's a practice yeah. and mm -hmm. it's not something that you, like, you don't ever figure it out in my experience where you go, okay, now I know who, what it means to be me and now yeah. I'm going to be me and then I'm gonna, always going to be me. <laughs> it's it's a journey. <laughs> it's kind of the point of life really. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So my 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 last question for you, Ashley, is where can people find you if they want to get in touch and continue the conversation with you? Yeah. Um, well, the easiest place is my website. It's just ashleycarpentier.com. Um, I have my social links there, um, links to my podcast and how you can contact me. Um, I'm also on Instagram, um, Ashley Renee Carpentier but that link is also on my website. So um, yes, my website is a great place to be in contact with me. Thank you, I love that, I love that. And what is your podcast called? Self Love Revolution. Thank you, beautiful. Yeah. So I will put the links in the show notes. So wherever you're watching or listening to this, you can find Ashley. If for some reason you can't, you can find me at Confidence Through Cabaret and I will put you in touch. Because, uh, Ashley and I are now in touch forever. That's it now. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so we can, we can, I can definitely uh, send you in the, in the direction. And I think your message is such an important one that we just can't ever have enough of. So mm -hmm. go and check out where Ashley is, go and check out the podcast and the website and all of the links. Um, and, and find out more because it is a practice to love yourself. Yeah. That, you know, there's ups and downs in that, but it's yeah. just about continuing. It's just a journey. It is. It is. Ashley, thank you so much for this conversation. It is something that is so near and dear to my heart because I think it's kind of, it's the point. It's, it's, it's the joy of life is feeling yeah. good in who you are. And I appreciate yeah. you sharing with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I have so much passion about this topic and I love being here to share more about it. Thank you. 
I am Heather Jean. This has been Ashley Carpentier and uh, all of the links are in the show notes to, to find us. Uh, we are Confidence Through Cabaret on all of the social media with the exception of Twitter, which is at YBYWYS and uh, Clubhouse is at Heather YBYWYS and those six wonderful letters stand for it is your body and it is your world and it is your stage. Take up space, own it, show up where you want to show up with passion and joy. Thank you again, Ashley, for being here. Thank you to everybody else for being here and listening and getting involved. Share your comments, like and subscribe, share this with other people um, because that is the point. And Ashley and I are here sharing our passion for uplifting and raising confidence and feeling good in who you are and join the conversation with us. Thank you again. Bye for now.